Yo, what up, what up, what up, man? Yo, look. I was over here on Pete the Patriots podcast, right? I was over in the chat room, blowing up the chat room, right? Because, you know, that's what I do every once in a while. And I'll be honest with you. I always want to have these conversations with individuals because we have been over here trying to work out the mechanics of how the system works, right? This is what we do. And I got a lot of love for Pete the Patriot. Right. And what we try to do is we try to expand individuals minds and change the paradigm of how individuals think about things. Now, you ask some individuals, if you're if you're from Pete's Pete show, I'm explain some things to your paradigm. It's what you think about something before you think about it. Right. You know, I mean, like, yo, if you stand here and go like, man, look, all right, you know. Having, I don't know, like a mass law enforcement system is a positive thing, right? Or just something that is. That's a paradigm. But if you were living 100 years ago, that wasn't a paradigm, right? And this is important to understand as a whole, that a lot of these systems that are in place right now didn't exist 100 years ago. And it's something that I think we need to have a conversation about as a whole, because the reasons why things are the way they are aren't what a lot of people think. And I want to have this conversation and I want to explain this to individuals because it's important for people to understand. Now, your local law enforcement in your town, right, or in your city or whatever the case might be are there for two reasons. One is, is they're there to allow businesses to operate with impunity. Right. They're there to allow businesses to feel safe and allow them to be able to operate in a manner that they can do what they need to do without having to worry about their shipments getting robbed or worried about, you know, I mean, somebody coming in and jacking things. They're there to make sure that the citizenry can walk to the, you know, I mean, local business or whatever the case is. Right. And secondly, police are there to uphold your local municipality's ability to continually raise taxes. And you say, man, what's that got to do with anything? Well, let me explain this. So if you wanted to stand here and have the ability to have your housing prices continue to go up in an area, right? So that the amount of money that you collect in property tax continues to go up. You would have to stand here and enforce everybody to have, say, their grass cut. Or have, you know what I'm saying, their siding proper. Or have, you know, all the things that a homeowner's association would do. Because they stand here and think that it's a good idea that your house is a fucking basically an ATM or a bank account. Now, in being me, right, I stand here and I go, well, is this a good idea? You know, I mean, because like you just like a lot of individuals, they'll just accept things for what they are. And for me, I don't like accepting things for what they are. I like to question stuff. You know, like I was the type of kid I stood there and I took apart the VCR when I was a kid. Right. Or I take apart, you know, I'm saying a vacuum cleaner. I take apart my walkie talkies I have when I was a kid. Right. Because I always wanted to understand how things worked. Right. My dad um is an HVAC guy. Right. <sighs> You know, my my grandparents were, you know, what I'm saying uh, one was in construction and he did farming. Right. Right. 14 kids. The other one, you know, what I'm saying he was a, he was a, a gangster. Right. <laughs> but this is the type of individuals I come from. You know, when my grand my great grandfather got to this country back in the 1940s, he had a plan of literally picking the gold off the streets because he heard the streets were made of gold <laughs> like the type of individuals I come from now. With this being said, I always question everything, just all the time. And I'm saying, like, oh, why, why is it this way? And to understand that, we have to understand a whole lot of other stuff, right? Because it's important to understand that, you know, I mean, there's this thing called the elephant graph. Now, the elephant graph is a really simple ideology, right? It's really simple. Over the past, you know, I mean, 30 years or so, it shows the growth and share of the world's GDP or GNP or whatever, you know, basic, the amount of growth that 
the that everybody has seen. All right. And it kind of looks like an elephant, right? You know what I'm saying? You see like the hump, you know what I mean? The head, and then it goes down to the bottom and you come up with a trunk, right? Now, as you look at this graph, you see, you know, that the big hump in the middle is China, basically, right? And then on the very bottom is us, right? That's the amount that we shared. And you notice it like it's at zero, right? It's below zero, okay? That's how much money the middle class has actually gained over the past 30 years. And then you see the top top piece, right? Yeah, that's, you know what I'm saying, the, the elite. Now, the reason why I show you this is because I want you to understand that the reason why you think your house should be an ATM machine or should be something that, you know, I mean, gains in value and allows you to be able to buy things is because instead of growing your, you know, I mean, actual pockets, your actual paycheck, they've stood here and allowed you to borrow money to continue to move forward. Is this a positive thing to put you in more debt rather than pay you more money? I say no. But here's the thing. Reaching the politicians and making them do something positive, right, for us is a very hard thing. But taking out their enforcement is a lot easier. And I'm a basic accelerationist, right? Uh, I've accelerationist streaks, okay? Like an accelerationist is basically if you see the country teetering on a cliff, you run up and push, <laughs> right? Like, yo, that's what an accelerationist is. Any opportunity you find to be able to go, your this system is dumb. And here's the thing, like, I don't need police, right? Because, you know, I'm six foot, 240 pounds, I'm heavily armed. And I mean, I'm accustomed to doing bad stuff anyway. It's not something that's going to harm me to continue to, to like stand here and live in a land without police. The police are here to protect two things, businesses and women in the end of the day. That's what they're here to protect. They're not here for, you know what I'm saying, males who are of age to be of fighting age. They're not here for us because that's the individuals who they lock up the most. Notice that. All right. But anyway, yo, look, let's listen to Pete real quick. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I want y'all to go over and I want y'all to sub to his channel if you watch this video. All right. I'm put a link in the description. Y'all make sure that you go and sub to his channel and show him some love and get in his chat and start dropping him red pills every day. You just start bombing him with red pills because we're going to red pill this dude and we're going to have this dude on point. We're going to have more voices out here spouting the truth in the end of the day. So let's go. Let's let's listen to him a little bit. You know, what I'm saying we'll respond a little You know, because this video is already about eight minutes. Let's rock. What's up, Jeff B? White Wings over on the, uh, the D-Lives. Freedom Bob's Eyeball is here. Welcome, Freedom Bob's Eyeball. And uh, Freedom Bob also. Twin Crier. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Freedom Bob, for the Ninja Gini. And Twin Crier for the uh, the egg. I appreciate that. Eric, what's... Right? Now, the last I checked, I wasn't sure. Maybe somebody... Could confirm this for me? Police officers, except for the, um, I think one, and that was back, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, are human beings, right? Police officers are human beings, except for that one RoboCop dude, which turned out in the end was still a human being. Now, This representative has never been in a situation like these police officers were in. People don't understand. And, and, and the guy in the Chauvin trial is doing a good job of explaining that not everything is black and white. There is a ass ton of gray areas in police work. Okay, so here's my problem with what Pete does as a whole, right? Because I love Pete. I think Pete's awesome. You know what I'm saying? I think he's a great guy. Um, you ever have a chance, go over there and ask him history questions. Like, yo, like the dude is on point, like legitimately. Um, here's my problem. I think he's attacking the wrong people, right? 
because you're never going to get anywhere <laughs> attacking the elites, right? Legitimately, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Because the elites protect each other, right? And the elites and the, you know, I mean, the people who, you know, I mean, are making the laws aren't going to respond to us as a whole, right? And basically all we're doing with this is being cathartic, right? I mean, being cathartic means you're just telling individuals what they want to hear and making them feel better about their own opinions. And if we're honest here, you know, it feels good, right? And it's going to gather you a whole bunch of people to come listen to you. But in the end of the day, it's not going it's not going to make a difference, right? We're kind of, we're standing here speaking to the crowd, right? We're standing here speaking to our own people. And that's not what we should be doing. Like we should be speaking to people who need to be able to hear our, how do I put this? They need to be able, we need to speak to people who need, who can hear the other side. Right. Because I can speak with leftists. I can speak with rightists. I can speak with whoever. Right. I speak to immigrants and legitimately I can sit here and break down situations and make, you know, I mean, I've been in discords where I've been around 50 people inside of a voice chat and I make them all go dumb and they go, man, we've never thought about it that way. Like, dude, man, like, yo. Yo, get this dude admin powers. I'm like, I don't want all this, right? What I do want is to be, have the ability to stand here and make individuals think about stuff in a different way, in a different light, right? And I'll be honest with you, right? In places like um, Minnesota, like the reason why Minnesota and Minneapolis, St. Paul's breaking down, the reason is the same reason why Detroit broke down, same reason why Chicago broke down, same reason why Camden broke down, same reason why New York broke down, same reason why Buffalo broke down, same reason why Syracuse, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Columbus, right? It's all because there's no jobs, right? Because these were major industrial centers. People don't know about Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's lost 90% of its industrial ability. Are we discussing that? Without like, yo, Everything breaks down to economics in the end of the day. Without the ability to provide for a family, without the ability to stand here and build middle class jobs, without the ability to do all the things that you need to do, and then you're pumping immigrants into these areas because Minneapolis, St. Paul is one of the number one destinations for Somali refugees. We don't know about that. Right? These are distressed areas. These are things that like we don't know. And it's important that we understand this. It's important that we have these conversations. Right? It's important that we stand here and we go, yo, look, these females shouldn't be cops. That's important. Legit. You know, when a female goes, taser, 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 blah, 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 right? And lays down some dude in the car because she thought she had a taser in her hand. Maybe she ought not to be a police officer. This is important, right? Maybe we shouldn't have the amount of laws that we have on the books right now. That's important. Right. These are important things to have conversations about. Maybe like I understand the problem isn't police officers, but the problem is the police. The problem is laws. The problem is there's too many of them. There's somewhere between like 30,000 and 50,000 laws just on a federal level. And you know why I say somewhere? Because no one actually knows. That means there's entirely too many laws on the books. But we're not having that conversation. But that's the conversation that needs to be had. I brought up child support. Why do I bring up child support? Because in a black community, right? And this is important to understand, right? Because like I come from these neck of the woods, right? I come, I come from the hood. It's important to understand that if you take an 18-year-old, I don't give a fuck if he's white or if he's black, right? And his mom's living in Section 8 and he turns 18. He can no longer stay there and say he knocks up some female. He's 18. <laughs> yo, he's went to an inner city school, so like, yo, he doesn't have an education. How, what type of job is he going to get? McDonald's, Wendy's, right? And everybody goes, oh man, you know, don't uh, don't stand here and make kids if you can't support them and all this fucking dumb shit. I feel where you are, but on the same point, would he be better off if those two had a relationship and worked together? You would, but. The options that a female has are entirely too many. Welfare, child support. On average, a, female, a single mom on welfare gets $50,000. Does it make any sense for her to stand here and stay with him when he ain't going to make fifty grand? 
Or is it better that she gets married to the state? Again, all these questions. And the moment he has child support, he's a criminal. Why is he a criminal? Because automatically he's being hunted in the streets if he doesn't have the money to pay. That's why I stand here and I go, yo, look, all these dudes are being turned into criminals by law enforcement. You get rid of the police. All that goes away. And all of a sudden now he's able to conduct business and be able to go to jobs and be able to have his license or even drive a car without a license without worrying about it. What's best for us on the bottom? That's the question. If you eliminate the things that are standing here continuing to push us down, we become better. That's 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 a weird paradigm to put your head around. But it's something I think we should have a conversation about at the end of the day. This is what I'm trying to talk. We got rid of our police in a lot of our communities. Why? Because they were doing nothing but pulling people over and harassing the citizenry. And the neighborhoods got better. That's important to understand. There are places you can't find a place to live in, the, in these areas. Why? Because like yo, the neighbors all hang out. You see kids riding around on bikes, playing at playgrounds. You don't see that in most of these areas, in other areas. Why do you see this? Because the police aren't there to harass them and mess with them. Hmm. Strange, ain't it? The moment you take police away, all of a sudden the community goes back to being a community. It's almost like you took an abusive father out of a, out of a, out of a household. All of a sudden, the kids are in better shape and the whole family's in a better spot. It's a weird position. Legitimately. Let's keep rocking though. What's up, Detroit Prepping? What is to me, is it possible that this police officer grabbed the first handled thing that she could grab? Yes, that's possible. Is it possible that in the midst of all the shenanigans going on, he's trying to get into his car? God knows why he's trying to get into his car. Apparently, he didn't have insurance. And he had some trees hanging in his in his little in his mirror. Is this a reason to run from the police? Well, let's let's talk about this, right? So, and this is always my problem with the government's monopoly on violence. Okay, so let's say you owe a parking ticket. Okay, it's a really simple thing. You owe a parking ticket. And you don't pay that parking ticket because you don't have a job, you don't have the ability, whatever it is, it don't matter, right? You, just, you don't pay the parking ticket. Ultimately, the state will escalate that to the point of where if you fight them to get away from there, you'll get shot. Is that a positive thing for any of us as a whole? Is that some, is, <laughs> that's tyranny. <laughs> in the end of the day that's tyranny let's keep it all the way 100 let's keep it a buck let's keep it just straight honest that's tyranny is that the is that how you want to live is that how you do you want to rule with an iron fist did any of us did anyone any of us ever agree to any of this did a single one of us ever agree to any of this i was never alive when any of this got fucking passed in the law thomas jefferson he said you should have a revolution once every generation because one generation is as foreign to the an older generation is as foreign to the younger generation as one nation to another what right do you have to rule over the next batch of human beings? And I get society and civilization. All right, I do. And I'm willing to compromise because like, I like the ideology of continuing to have my nationality continue forward. But 
But, and this is a huge but, we have to have some type of agreement. Yo, governors rule at the behest of the governed. It's that simple. It's that basic. If I didn't agree that any of this should happen, why is it that I should be allowed to die in order for you to enforce it on me? <clears throat> That's a real question. As a whole, and I'll be honest with you, I would love a response video to this. <sighs> and I'm only asking you these questions because like, you know, this is a dialogue. Don't feel attacked at all, my brother. Like, this is a dialogue between the two of us. And this is something that I wanted to stand here and have a conversation about from a motif of freedom, a motif of liberty, a motif of standing here screaming out as one citizen to another. I would love to know the reasons why it is that I should have my sons have all this pushed on them. Why I should argue for this system to my children. Why? Because I think we can both agree that there's too much loss, too much red tape. Why does Detroit continue to stay bad? Because Detroit's law enforcement hasn't shrunk even though its population has gone down by two thirds. Maybe you ever consider the fact, legitimately, that the government's the problem as a whole. Maybe the amount of money that we're paying for all this law enforcement is causing the law enforcement. <laughs> this is what I'm saying about them being parasites. They literally live off the backs of our money. Now, I'm not talking about firefighters, and ambulance crews, right? And I'll be honest, where I live, we don't pay for those things. They are all volunteer, right? And yes, they have grants that come from the feds and the state, but like we support them, right? Like you know, everybody stands here and goes and, you know, buys their chicken barbecues and, you know, they, we stand here and we buy their raffle stuff and like, you know, they fund themselves a lot, at least some of it anyway, right? And they get tax breaks for standing here buying their fire equipment and shit. And they respond and they do well and they're amazing guys. And I love them. And I love the EMTs. They're great people. But in the end of the day, when it's all said and done, why do you need police to deal with your neighborhood? If your neighborhood is in such disarray and so destroyed, I feel as though sending in men with guns and badges is just escalating every situation. Now, over here on my channel, right, we have a motif about guns and badges in conversations. The reasons why prohibition was as bad as what it was because you brought a man with a gun and a badge in the conversation about drinking. The reason why the drug war is terrible is because you brought a man with a gun and a badge into a conversation about, you know what I'm saying, fucking addiction. The reasons why you have school shootings is because every time two children try to solve an altercation, you bring a man with a gun and a badge into it, it automatically escalates. And now with basic life in most cities and most places where individuals, and this is what I'm saying about all these individuals who... You know, and this is this is the problem is like you're not hearing about this. Every one of these dudes legitimately. Right. The reasons why they were going to jail, like real shit, why the police weren't going to let them go. And the reasons why they try to run. Almost every one of them had a child support case. And they didn't have the three or four thousand dollars because those debts never end. And they don't go away just because you lose your job. They don't care. They say, fuck you, pay me. 
And you go, oh, the children didn't ask to be here and all these type of things. And I get that mentality. I do. And yes, I have child support cases too. And I pay my fucking shit and I do what I got to do. And I'm almost done. But after 18 years being a slave and watching a third of my city's population go to jail and watching my friends who aren't as strong as me, aren't as intelligent as me and aren't able to hold down gigs like I do go in and out of the system their entire lives and never be a part of their children's lives and then watching their children get shot and go to jail. Watching it destroy my friends and my family and the people I love. I go, I get it. And I think that's important to understand as a whole. And this mentality of understanding that debt and the collection of debt through criminal means and by criminalizing a man who loses his job due to a bad economy or a bad economic output or a bad economic uh, you know, outlook in your local municipality and local area and having no way to make remorse for this because of the fact that like every dollar you get, they take away from you and you can't run, you can't move, you can't replan, you can't do anything. And understanding that this here is the main cause of most of this shit. You have to understand that like all these things are caused by bad laws. It doesn't matter whether they're needed or not. None of that matters. What matters is, is what, what the end result is in the end of the day. That's an important conversation to have. Like you can pass a law and you go, oh man, this is needed, right? And then you watch it destroy your society and you go, well, it was a good law. I'm like, no, it wasn't. It's just like the Democrats and, you know, passing gun bans or, you know I mean, good laws. It's not. These are bad laws. Anyway, yo, look, man, this is getting kind of long. I just wanted to put this out here because, like, I thought it was kind of important that we have this conversation at the end of the day. Anyway, yo, Pete, do me a favor, man. Respond to my video. You know what I mean? I'm going to send it to you. You know what I mean? We'll see what the hell happens. Anyway, yo, look, it's Tom Pete. Y'all know the deal. Like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you go sub to his channel in the description. Check my channels out on Odyssey. Support the channel. You know the deal. Patreon, you know, whatever, Streamlabs, da, 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 da. Peace.